I love cars. I wasn't always this way, but once I got my driver's license, this feeling of both independence and mechanical connection with the road just consumed me. Since then, I've explored all the boundaries of transit on four wheels. Old or new, cheap or expensive, all of it has been fascinating to me. Here's my project car. It's great, but it's got two big problems. It's expensive and big. And until recently, I thought I was pushing the boundaries of what could be called a car. But there's something I haven't been considering nearly enough. E-bikes. Now before you go into the comments and ridicule me for trying to get everyone to sit on a little bike seat in the freezing cold for the sake of the environment, that's not what I'm suggesting at all. In fact, even if the environment weren't at play at all, I would still give an overwhelming thumbs up to e-bikes. They're faster to get around town, they're cheaper, they're more reliable, and they're fun. With all those things in mind, assuming you live in an area with more than just a Walmart and a bar, they're an excellent way to get around town, and not just a supplement, but a replacement for your car. You know what? Why don't we put it to the test? E-bike for a sports car, let's go. This is the very intersection where we will start our race. Over there, we've got our very high-powered sports car. Very fast. GTIs are fast. Whoa, transition! Whoa. Now, we're going to race from the west side of town all the way to the east side of town to my favorite deli. Since I don't have any friends, I'll have to drive both vehicles, but I'll make sure to do it on the same day with the same amount of traffic. Now, as I race to Alimentari, I'd like to ask you all if you could be so generous as to consider checking out my Patreon page. I'd like to make this YouTube thing my primary source of revenue by the end of 2023, and that would very much help me. This is where you want to be on an e-bike. Red light. Green light. Yield up here, gotta slow down a little bit. The uh, sports car was able to do it in seven minutes and 36 seconds. Did I do good? And the e bike? How'd I do? In eight minutes flat. Did I, did I do good? Did I do good? Did I win? Did I beat the car? Well, my excuse is that I had to sit at like three red lights, so eh. Anyways, back to the main course. <sighs> Hi. Before we get into the weeds of the financials, questionable legalities, and culture of electrically powered bicycles, I want to talk a little bit about my personal experience. When I first moved to the city, I really didn't have that much of anything. What I did have, however, was a really neat Rad Power bicycle. It was called the Rad Rover. It had these like crazy fat tires. It was awesome. However, I was only able to ride it around my block once because, well, someone stole it. That broke me. And I'm not going to get too much into the details, but to be honest with you, it was my fault. Now, it hasn't been until relatively recently that my company here in Madison has taken off enough to afford me to play a little bit and have some toys. And since I miss the old rad so much, I thought I'd get something similar. But what I bought isn't exactly in the same class. This is the Aerial Rider X-Class, and it's got 2,000 watts of peak power, 20 amp hours, and 52 volts of pure, clean fun. I picked this bad boy up for $2,400, and you know what? That's what I pay for the insurance on my station wagon every year. Now I'm not just passionate about e-bikes because of my desire to change transit infrastructure. No, I'm passionate about e-bikes because this shit is insane. Okay, enough horseplay. Let's talk about what mass adoption of e-bikes would look like for society. Let's get this out of the way. My biases. I am a die-hard car boy. I love to go vroom vroom, and the idea of driving through some twisty roads on a Sunday makes me happy. But that doesn't change the fact that a car-based society is mad dumb. And no, electric cars are not the answer. Electric cars didn't come to save the planet, they came to save the car industry. And yes, it's a great thing that we have electric cars, but that doesn't change the fact that our communities are riddled with something called strobes. 
You see, a strode is neither a place to drive quickly over a long distance, like a highway, nor is it a place to walk safely through town to say go to the dentist or the shop. The reason we have these strodes is primarily because of lobbying, who would have thunk, plus the extension of suburban culture permeating urban environments. I don't have to tell you that we spend an inordinate amount of time and money maintaining and developing a car-based infrastructure. What I can say is that throwing e-bikes into the mix would make urban areas far cheaper to maintain and more importantly, faster to repair when needed. One of the largest sources of carbon emissions is the curing process of concrete something that would be drastically cut down in this e-bike-focused society I'm talking about. Don't get me wrong, changing our entire infrastructure is a crazy idea. That is, if done overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day, and changing the way we get around won't happen quickly either. Something you should probably keep in mind is that a quarter of Americans do live paycheck to paycheck, and what that means is if their car breaks down, that would likely be career-ending, because, simply put, they can't get to work. The cost of said repair would probably be the cost of a brand new e-bike, which is kind of cool. I'll spare the semantics, but we have three classes of e-bike, and if you go above any threshold within those classes, most state governments will tell you that you have to hike it to the DMV to get it registered. But here's the thing. Our government isn't exactly interested in the nuances of electrical engineering. For example, two e-bikes that both have 750 watt motors may not be the same. This bike came with two different versions, both of which had the same motor, but it had two different motor controllers. You could imagine that one was much faster than the other. Of course, we have to legislate this stuff. Otherwise, you're gonna have some dipshit knucklehead blasting down a bike path at 50 miles an hour, and I don't even wanna think about that. Oh, hey, you going down? You know, something to consider about bike paths is much like on the road where we never actually utilize our top speed of likely 120 or 140 miles an hour, besides the Nissan Altima gang, we should really consider just having a maximum speed limit on bike paths or roads or whatever for e-bikes to keep everyone safe. I mean, it seems like common sense to me. I don't understand why just because something has a faster top speed that we should regulate it like everyone's always going at the top speed. Now, if your reaction to adding more e-bikes on the bike paths makes you think that the whole situation will be more dangerous, I would say that those who are on a bicycle, a normal bicycle for exercise on bike paths, have certainly been the most uh, uh, dangerous, at least in my experience. And I've never had a near miss with someone on an e-bike. I've had multiple near misses with people on regular bicycles. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing wrong with people uh, going out and exercising on their bicycles, but just think of the two different mindsets. The last thing I wanna say about bike paths is we should really consider wherever we implement one to have a walking lane and then two bicycle lanes on the other side. The reason I say that is because people like me can walk or run or whatever and not worry about a bicycle slamming into them. And then the people who are cycling don't have to worry about a pedestrian being on the other side of a corner or something like that. The reason why bike lanes, walking lanes, whatever you want to call it, work so well, you actually have a sense of people around you and speed and reaction time is natural. So if there's someone walking or running, it's not a surprise, it's like organic. And the amount of people who get hurt on bike paths are extremely small. And anytime someone does, does get hurt, it's because the bike path crosses the road and someone hits someone on the bike path with a car. This is what we call a pro gamer move. Now I don't know where exactly the line is drawn between bicycle and motorcycle, but let's not kid ourselves, this is no electric motorcycle. In terms of speed class, we're barely at the moped range. There's nothing else that can go as fast as this vehicle while being able to behave like a normal bicycle. Now I don't have a problem sharing roads with cars, there's nothing wrong with that as long as the roads are properly designed for electrically powered bicycles. Thus far I've talked about the systemic view of what it would be like to adopt e-bikes as a society, but now I want to talk a little bit more about the individual point of view. The first thing I want to mention is cost. As mentioned before, these things are far cheaper than cars. A lot of people get sticker shock from them, but that's because they interpret them as bicycles. But even then, even a, a bike like this, which cost me $2,400, loads of people spend $2,400 on bicycles, which are nowhere nearly as useful as this one. Let's do a little comparison. On Yankel, my project car, brake pads would be 150 bucks. On this thing, $10. I don't have to pay for gas, ever. Electricity in America is crazy cheap. Plus there's like no oil changes or anything like that. The only main things you do are tires and brake pads and those are easy and cheap, at least compared to a car. The more I think about it, the more it makes sense where 
If you want to get into a project car but you can't afford it or you don't have the space, you should seriously consider starting off with getting, say, just a crappy bicycle, slapping an e-bike kit on it, and go and have fun. You can all the different upgrades that you can do to a car apply to bicycles or e-bikes. You can do motor upgrades, suspension upgrades, tire upgrades, brake upgrades, all of it. It's super fun. I've never seen anyone turbocharge an e-bike, but someone is going to figure that out. Let's talk about the health benefits of riding an e-bike. Imagine replacing 40 or 45 minutes of sedentary commuting with 40 to 45 minutes of riding a bicycle every day. Now that may not sound like a whole lot, but imagine doing that over the course of an entire year. Now I can speak firsthand because I've been e-biking for about a year and my cardiovascular system has actually improved quite a bit. Other than that, there are some pretty substantial mental health benefits as well. It's really tough to describe, but there's something about actually physically cycling through your neighborhood and the city that you live in that really makes you feel much more connected to the place you live. It's pretty awesome to be able to just bike through your neighborhood and meet new people and smile and wave at your neighbors because it's your neighborhood. And for me personally, it's made me feel a lot more tied together with the city that I live in. Let me put it this way. I've never had anyone try my e-bike and not like it. Can't say the same about my car. Now, of course, there's elderly and disabled people in this world, and we should do everything we can to accommodate them. And it's always going to be a challenge, whether it's e-bikes or cars or anything else for that matter. Something to keep in mind is in communities where walking or cycling is a viable mode of transportation, everyone, elderly included, tend to be a lot healthier later in life. With the many cringeworthy individuals in the car community suggesting that anything that's electrically powered is for c Many, including myself, are alienated and decide to go pursue a hobby with mechanical motion, but without the white knights. Of course, there will always be that guy. And don't think that I'm done with cars, or the car community for that matter. I love cars. I love e-bikes, both of which I'm sure will be major players in how we get around for a long time to come. Thanks for watching. Bye!